So I've had a few people ask about how do you deal with slopes. This is how I've dealt with slopes. Terracing. Keep in mind everything you're going to see in this video. This is my context. That means this works for me. It doesn't mean it's the only solution. It doesn't mean it's the best solution because I've made a lot of mistakes getting here and this may evolve over time. It may not work for you, so do what works for you. Also keep in mind, this isn't a permaculture demonstration site, so whether it's permaculture or not, doesn't matter. That's not my context. The goal out of this system, where it's at now, is trying to produce food. Food of quantity, food that is significant in the production levels. Not a little bit, a lot of it enough for my family and then some hopefully that I can move off site whether that's giving it away or potentially selling it at some point. The slope under me here is made of decomposed granite. Bedrock if you will is not too far below me. When granite gets rained on you get the water and some of the minerals within the soil itself that create an acid. They dissolve the bedrock, you get decomposed granite, so you get a very soft granite. Not hard like you'd see on countertops. This stuff can be very crumbly where you can break it into your hands. Nonetheless, it's right below me and it often comes out in big chunks. Anything from basketball size to beach ball size to old 27 inch CRT TV size big pieces under here. So when thinking about how I wanted to design the slope, I needed something flat. I wanted a bed-based system that was easy to work. Working on a slope, it's cumbersome. And at some spots, this slope is tough to work on because it gets really steep. So I wanted to try and buffer that. It's also not an even slope. It slopes down kind of this way but it also goes like this. So while it's sloping down, the property is also kind of crowned like this. So think of it like the slope of a ball. It's sloping in many directions all at once. Again, it makes things tough to work with. I wanted to try and simplify it to more of a market garden bed-based system. One way to do that is to try and flatten out the land. Now you can flatten it out in a variety of ways. You can dig down and cut and remove to get it flat, but why that doesn't work for me is because the soils here are shallow. They're hard to dig through because of the big chunks of rock. There's a lot of clay. When granite breaks down, one of the byproducts of that is clay. So it can be really hard to dig through. So excavating very long 50 foot terraces that are three feet wide or 10 feet wide, if there's multiple beds in them, is a lot of work. And if you think about it, if you're excavating down to more of a bedrock and you're getting down to really hard soil, well, it's not even really soil, you're getting down to a hard surface, what's left at that point for the plants to grow in? Not very much. So at that point, I'd start having to bring in soil or build the soil up, depending again on your context. What do you want to do? How fast do you want to go? You can bring it in to speed it up which is what I did, like I talked about in that compost video, or you can try and build it on site. Either's fine, figure out what works for you. So going down provided some challenges for me. I'm on a hard surface, it's hard digging. I didn't really wanna do that. So what I decided to do was build up using terraces like this. Essentially, doing the same thing as going down, just the opposite. Now that requires some work in making these walls. This is probably the third or fourth iteration of these walls. These walls started out as wood, stupid, terrible idea. That ended up getting knocked down and then most of that wood is actually buried in these terraces. So a little hugel culture-esque. But building up has allowed me to make the land flat, which is what I wanted. It's given me now deep soils, which is good for the plants. And it's given me something that's going to work long term. By creating these deep soils, it solves a lot of problems for me here in California. One, I get away from the hard surface that's directly below me. Two, the deep soils, they're good for plants. There's a lot of nutrients in there. There's also a lot of water holding capacity. That's why it's worth it for me to bring in all that compost. It's a bunch of work. It's money now to pay off later. I don't plan on moving for a long, long time. So hopefully I do this once right, and again, this is multiple iterations to get here, 
this will last me 20 years and that's what I want. Now I'm going to step back and I'll show you how some of the terracing looks from a more zoomed out view. So here's just above where I was standing before. Initially my goal when I came in here was to essentially permaculture the hell out of this place and it wasn't the best idea. I made a lot of mistakes and I've since learned you don't do permaculture, you use permaculture in what you do. I made these big hugel terraces out of wood because I wanted to impose the hugel culture solution on here. In short, it didn't work very well at all. So most of that wood is now buried in a terrace based system which again works for me. So the slope, as I pan down it here, you can see the multiple levels of these terraces going up. The bottom layer is supported by rock because that's the highest. That's right there. These upper layers are more of a subtle terrace. Now this is going to change a little bit over the course of the next few months, which hopefully you'll see on video here because I'm redoing this beds, taking out a lot of this fencing, going to a different rotation system for my chickens. But a lot of these upper terraces aren't going to require any support. Just the earth itself with a gentle enough 45 degree slope, it'll stay in place, it'll be fine. Previously, like if you can see right in this area right here, this is how it looked native. So if we kind of come around the side, tricky to capture on video, but I've built up along the way. And again, that has worked for me. Now you could go down, you could cut it out or you could go up. I've gone up. I'll show you an end view here to give you another perspective on what this looks like down the way. Okay, so now I'm at the end of the beds and I'll swing around this way. And you can start to see how I showed in that video a few days ago where I'm really building up here. And this end has really worked against me because the slope is going down the property in that direction. So I'm having to build way up. Now, the negative of that is it's a lot of work. It's a lot of material now. The good thing at the end of the day is I'm gonna have three feet of good soil on top of the surface to plant into. If we swing around here, you'll get a perspective of what these slopes look like. I've really flattened it out as much as I could. I'm trying to get one or two 30 inch beds per level on these slopes. That's really what's going to work for me. These aren't huge cuts. They're not 10, 12 feet wide. I'm doing what I can. I realize there's going to be some subtle sloping down. Doesn't have to be perfectly flat. But this is a view of what I'm working with here. Changing around over the summer, changing around right now. And at the end of the day, it works. It's taken a barren slope with no soils on it, which if I can show you what, you know, this is probably even more perspective right here. You can see in this area right here, this is the native slope. And then this area closer to me here, this is the fill. So a lot has came in here, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. It's solved a lot of these challenges. It's gotten rid of thin soils. It's made it easier to work because it's flat and it's added a lot of organic matter, which helps hold water. I'll keep you updated on the progress, but this is how I've handled the slope on my property. It works for me. It may work for you. If it does, give it a try. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.